Oh boy. Oh, ho, ho, ho. we got the new one. Today we're reviewing the new EG4 6500EX. This is an LV6548 on steroids. EG4's model is different because it's UL1741, so it will actually pass an inspection so you can actually use this with the grid. All the other 6548s on the market are only UL certified. This one is actually listed. Also, their batteries are UL listed, so again, you can pass an inspection. Next, you can connect 8,000 watts of solar panels to a single unit. If you have two of these, you can connect 16,000 watts, and that is a lot of solar. Next feature is the max input voltage is 500 volts. That means you can use this unit without a combiner box, just like the other new EG4 all-in-one solar power system. Next, it has a 6,500 watt high frequency single phase 120 volt inverter. You can combine this with other units to create a split phase output for 240 volts if you wanna back up your whole house. Next feature is it actually looks cool. Why don't the other companies do this? Like, it's not that hard to add this graphic, but it makes it look a lot cooler. Would you rather have this on your wall, like four of these, or a bunch of white LV6548s? I think this looks way better. Next, this model has a five-year warranty with Signature Solar. If there are any issues with any EG4 all-in-one system, they will either repair or replace it very quickly. Next, it has a 120 amp battery charger for use with the grid. You can either use this unit to charge your 48 volt battery bank or you can use it as an uninterruptible power supply with a bypass mode. So you can do pretty much anything you want. Next, communication with this model works with all EG4 batteries. It's very easy to use. You use one cable from here to a battery and then you enable it in the settings on this unit. No one else on the market has this quite yet. Everyone else is using third party inverters and they're using other batteries and they're trying to get it to communicate. With this one, it is plug and play. And it's an LV6548. This is literally my favorite all-in-one solar power system, but actually upgraded with the features that we all want. And Signature Solar, or EG4, is the first company to do this. They have the cheapest server rack batteries. They also have UL-listed batteries and all-in-one solar power systems now. They also have the highest PV input voltage, so you don't have to use a combiner box. So they're trying to build a full system for very cheap. So on paper, it seems fantastic, but I really wonder how it differs from an LV6548. Imagine if this one is listed, but the older one is not, and they have the same components. So let's open them up and see what's inside. First big difference is how you connect solar panels to these two units. On the old LV6548, they have MC4 adapters, and these are very convenient and easy to use, but these will not pass inspection. So on the EG4, they have screw terminals and a place to put conduit, but everything else is exactly the same exactly the same. So they look similar, but there's actually some subtle differences. They have the same manufacturer cooling fan, but on the EG4, it's a different model. This one consumes 0.9 amps, and this is 1.05 amps instead, which might change the idle consumption draw, but not by much. Next, there's an input breaker right here, and it's next to the terminals. Typically, you see it mounted down here but everything else is the same. The input capacitors, the parallel board, everything else is identical. Very similar, but there are some subtle differences. So the EG4 has an input breaker right here. This one on the input, it actually has a fuse. Next, the plastic cover for the inverter circuit has a slightly different design. You'll notice that it doesn't lift up like it does on the EG4. But on the boards themselves and the actual components, there is no difference at all. Even the standoffs and the circuit design, everything is the same. Oh, these have different fets. So the inverter circuit is different. And the filtering capacitors for the inverter circuit are also different as well. Very subtle, but yeah, there are some differences here. And the FETs they're using is KGF75N65 
KDF, same heat sink, same everything else. And down the center, you have all the switches. So the transfer switch and everything else. So PV input is on this side. PV output is over here and connects to the battery on this board. So mostly they're very similar, but this one has different FETs in the inverter circuit. And I wonder if that will change the idle consumption or the efficiency of the inverter circuit. Probably not by much, but we'll check it. Besides that, the changes are very subtle and they're practically clones of each other. And these are made by the same manufacturer, but the EG4 is made to pass inspections and have a higher input voltage for the MPPT. That's pretty much it. So let's put this back together and see what else we can find. Now keep in mind, whenever you connect these large all-in-one systems to a battery, you need to either charge up the capacitors with a pre-charge resistor or use the one that's built into the battery. And it's quite simple. You leave the circuit breaker in the on position. You turn the BMS off by pressing this reset button. Wait till the lights go off and you'll hear a click. And then you can safely connect the battery to the all-in-one unit. And there should be no spark if you do it properly. Oh, and the battery's back on again, so I don't think you need to turn it on. It just does it automatically. Now we need to attach the cover and turn it on. Let's turn it on. Now the inverter is on and we can measure the idle consumption. And we're getting 1.7 amps. And that's 81 watts. That's actually a little bit higher than the other models. Let me go check. So I just tested another LV6548 and it's 1.48 amps which gives us 71 watts, and typically it's 70 to 77 watts. So for whatever reason, this model specifically uses a couple more watts than the other models available. And this model has different fans and extra features, so that might be why. So fast forward to the next day, and I'm trying to get the communication system to work, because it's supposed to be plug and play. But I realized that I can't get rid of Error 61 because I'm using a standard Ethernet cable. And you have to use the special cable that comes with this battery. It does not come with this all-in-one unit. Personally, I will never use the communication system, but a lot of people still like that, and they like that it's plug and play. But I don't have that cable. I have no idea where it went. I will have these batteries coming in the future, so we'll make a video about communication, and I'll do a step-by-step -step tutorial. And I'm pretty sure that it should work. Their other inverter worked flawlessly with their new EG4 protocol, so I'm pretty sure that it should work just fine. But you need the proper cable. Do not try to use other ones or ethernet cables. It will not work. Now something we can use an ethernet for is making this display remote. So let's remove this display by removing this screw. There's a cable on the side that you need to remove, just like that. Then plug one end of the ethernet cable over here, and then the other end over here. And then you can turn it on. And unlike the communication system, you can use any ethernet cable you have available. And this is quite useful. You can mount this screen wherever you wish. If you are running this in an RV, for example, you can put this in the living area. Now connecting any LV6548 or the 6500EX to a computer is very easy to do. It comes with the cable. You plug this in the back of your computer and then this one plugs in right here and you can use the CD or download their program online. And then that's it, you just hook it up up and it works every time. I've never had an issue with that program. Now once it's connected with this program, you can log data over time, you can change the settings and do all sorts of cool stuff. But personally, I never use this. Um, it's just a waste of time and effort, especially if you have multiple inverters in parallel for a split phase output. I like to change the settings on the display screen in under a minute, make sure that it's working by seeing how much solar I produce over a course of a day, and then I move on with my life. I don't wanna sit here and watch all these numbers because there's nothing that can really help me. Um, if you want more solar, you need more solar panels. If you need more output, you need more inverters. Um, if something's not working, you can find out very quickly. Um, logging data all day and staring at it is not gonna tell you a whole lot. The best test for a system is a capacity test with a high quality shunt. Ensure that your battery is pulling full capacity and and then do a load test. Run this at max output and see if anything shuts down or if anything overheats. Also for the first few days of running your system, ensure that the batteries are charging up to 100% and down to whatever you set in the settings. Most problems with these units is because of user error, because they don't understand the settings. So make sure that you go through every setting in the manual and understand it. Now a lot of 
testing that I want to do with this model has to be in split phase output. So I'm going to make another video where we build a full size system with these inverters and we'll see how they perform, if there's any differences at all with an LV6548. But something that we could test is the firmware because I know the firmware that's on all the other models. Even the Sun Gold power inverter has the same firmware as the MPP. So if this one doesn't, that means that it won't be able to communicate with an MPP or the other models. On all the other models, it's 45.07. This one's 79.02. So totally different firmware. I know the other version numbers too, and this I have never seen before. And the display firmware is different as well. So I think with the EG4 protocol and the manufacturer, they had to make their own firmware for this model, which is very good to know. So you cannot use this with other models. If you want this in split phase output with an MPP LV6548, it will not work. If you use an MPP and a Sun Gold inverter, those ones will work. They have the same firmware, but this one is very different. So I wouldn't even attempt it. It could be very dangerous. And I've learned that the hard way, so do not mess with that. If they have different firmware, do not put them in parallel. So unfortunately, that's all we can really test in this video. I don't have that extra cable. Um, if I wanna max out the output and test that, uh, 6,500 watts, we need a dedicated load center and proper conductor size. So I'm gonna make another video where I build a large system with this, and we're gonna run some massive loads for weeks at a time. It will be really cool and I have 12,000 watts of solar that we can attach. But so far, pretty cool. I think a lot of people will love using these with their cheap server rack batteries. These are the best deal on the market for a server rack. Um, no one else can compare with price. And personally, I don't care for the screen and all those other features. Um, I just want a cheap battery when I build a large system. And now it's compatible with an all-in-one system that's UL listed. So long term, I think a lot of people are gonna buy these because just the listing itself is so valuable. The other company stated that they will have the listing, but it's been like a year and they're the first ones to actually have it. So that's, that's a huge selling point. I don't doubt that the other companies will get listed, but who knows when it will happen. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you thought that I missed something or something that you want to see me test when I build it into a full size system, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.